Hello friends, here I am with a quick overview of the semiconductors. In this part, I'll taking only the basic part of the chapter and the diodes part basically. So what you need to study here, first of all the band theory, uh, how to classify conductors, insulators, semiconductors based on this band theory, band gap thing. Then what is intrinsic, what is extrinsic semiconductors, basic differences and the numerical formula that you will require is the law of mass action, which for any type of semiconductor it is valid any into n h would be equal to n i square. And you can say that the conductivity that is due to conductivity due to electrons plus conductivity due to holes current is current due to electrons plus current due to holes. Then you have to know the p-n junction formation that you do for your board examination. And then p-n diode how it behaves in forward bias you know it behaves like a wire if it is ideal one. Reverse bias it, bro it behaves as a broken wire. The realistic curve is like this. In the forward bias after a knee voltage uh, you have the current rapidly increasing. So here it offers a low resistance, here it offers a very large resistance and after breakdown the current keeps increasing. Just remember this, then the reverse bias current is in micro amperes and this voltage is much higher. In, in the forward bias it is milliampere and the voltage is 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 volts order. Then you have different types of diode, the major one is the Zener diode on which numericals come otherwise you have to also get the idea of the photodiode LED and everything. Now just to check, first type of question that we encounter is based on this diode and we assume them to be ideal diodes. So what we have, circuit has two oppositely connected ideal diodes in parallel, what is the current flowing in the circuit? So look at it, so this is the positive, this is the negative, so this diode is reverse biased this is forward bias. Because it is reverse bias ideal diode, this branch no current flows effectively we have only a single loop. So directly it behaves as a simple wire so current would be effective resistance is 4 plus 2 6. So that is 12 by 6 that is equal to 2 ampere. So the current 2 ampere will flow here, it will go here, no current will flow here. So the current flowing in the circuit or in the D2 would be 2 ampere, no current flows in the diode D1. Similarly, here there is a, a, a tweak in it. The reading of the ammeter for a silicon diode, whenever silicon diode is given, we typically take even when it is forward bias, we take a drop of 0.7 here. For germanium, we take 0.2 or 0.3 volt drop, here we will take as 0.7 volt drop. So the effective drop remaining on this would be 2.3 volts. So the current using that Ohm's law on resistor, it would be 2.3 upon 200 that is uh, you can write into you can say 1000 you will have in milliampere. So what you have this is 523 into 5 that will come out as 11.5 milliampere go for option 1 in this particular case taking it as 0.7. Next uh, now you check yourself with these two questions I am uh, giving here one from the NEAT test uh, NTA test 66 and one is the question from AIPMT pre 12. Just take a screenshot and check. I have not written the answer, you can find out these answers because these answers you have access to. Just try and check whether you understand or not. Next one. This is another type of question where the connections are given and you have to check whether the diode is forward or reverse bias. So how to check? There it is minus 6, there it is minus 3. Whenever there is a resistor, forget that. For checking, assume this is minus 3. So what we have, this is at a lower potential, this is at a higher potential, so it is a reverse bias. Check here it is 3 volt, it is 0 for uh, the timing, take it like this. So yes, it is forward biased. This is also forward bias, it is lesser. This is also what we have, this is 2 and 2. I think it should be minus 2 here, otherwise it would be neither forward nor forward reverse you can have. So we'll go for this one, option A is the easiest one. So such questions come whether it is a forward or reverse biased. Next, on finding the resistance, we typically define the resistance here as change in voltage upon change in current. This is the dynamic resistance or AC resistance we define not the DC1 V by I here. So ratio of forward to reverse. So in forward let us see when voltage change from 0.7 to 0.8 the current changes from 10 milliampere. So in the forward bias the resistance the, this is 0.1 volt and the change is going to be 10 milliampere that is 10 into 10 to the power minus 3 that comes out as 10 ohm. That comes out as 10 ohm for you. Now what is in the reverse? Here it is 0, here it is minus 10. So change of 10 results in a current of, this is 1 I think would be written here, 1 microampere. So this is the reverse, R in reverse bias that is equal to 10 to the power 7 ohms. So if you take the ratio, this ratio would be, you have to check the ratio of forward to reverse. So forward is lesser, reverse is higher. So go for 10 to the power minus 6. The resistance in reverse is much much higher. Now this is a question based on your basic extrinsic intrinsic law of mass action. You have a germanium doped with aluminium. This you know it is a trivalent. So what we will have a we will have a p-type. 
concentration of acceptor become 10 to the power 21 and intrinsic carrier concentration ni is 10 to the power 19 you always know ne into nh is always equal to ni square so because it is doped nh will almost be 10 to the power 21 so ne i can directly approximate as ni square that is 10 to the power 38 divided by nh that is 10 to the power 21 n of acceptor 1 this comes out as 10 to the power 17 per meter cube go for option a here because here with the if you take 10 to the power 21 is much much greater than 10 to the power 17 so that uh, additional one need not to be catered here next one if the ratio of the concentration of electrons and that of holes in a semiconductor is 7 is to 5 ratio of their current is 7 is to 4 ratio of their drift velocity is so you know the basic equation i is n e a v d you know so ratio of concentration is given charge is same area will be same drift velocity you have to take so I e upon I h I can write as N e upon N h into V d of electron to V d of holes. So, ratio of drift velocity V d of electron to V d of holes is I e by I h into N h by N e. So, I e by I h is 7 is to 5 uh, sorry ratio of the current is 7 is to 4 that is given to you and their concentration is 7 is to 5. So, it would be 5 is to 7. So, the answer comes out as 5 is to 4. So, go for option d here this would be the option you will have here now in a pn junction diode the square input signal of 10 volt is applied so here what you will see when it is plus 5 so this would be forward bias so you will see this 5 volt across in the output so output will show 5 volt and when it is minus 5 it will be reverse bias no current flows through rl so output will be zero so output would be plus 5 only for this duration so go for option a here next one in the given figure, a diode is constructed connected to an external resistor R, 100 ohms, EMF of 30 volt, volt is a EMF of 3.5, I think this 35 is a printing mistake from my end, 3.5. If the barrier potential, now this is important, barrier potential across the diode is 0.5, that means even it is forward bias, you have to take the drop as 0.5. So, on this resistor, the drop is 3 volt, so the current would be 3 upon 100. So, that comes out as uh, you can say 3000 by 100 in milliampere terms. So, that is 30 milliampere. Go for option 3. This is the question from AIPMT 2015. For the circuit shown in the figure, now this is the Zener one, how the Zener uh, behaves. So, what we have for the circuit uh, in the circuit shown, this is 70 volts, total is 120, that means this is 50 volts. Now, because this is 70, I can make it out the current through this resistor is going to be. 70 upon 5 milliampere I can write kilo so that is 14 milliampere and this is 50 over this so this is 50 over 10 so what we will have we will have 5 milliampere so the remaining from junction law would be 9 milliampere will go through the Zener one so the current through the Zener is 9 milliampere that is the answer output voltage is 50 not 60 not 40 now one more from the Zener one from J main on line 15 the value of resistor needed in the DC voltage regulator circuit here equals. So, what you have you need uh, this is VL this is the voltage this IL goes here n times IL goes here that means this will be n plus 1 IL from junction law. So, what is the value you require? So, this is VI I what I can make it out delta V across RS would be equal to VI minus VL and uh, the current I know. So, what we need the value of resistor would be delta V by I that is VI minus VL upon n plus 1 i l that is what you get. So, that is v i minus v l upon n plus i i l that we get. So, going by this uh, the option that I am getting is option 3 you can do. Next one a Zener is connected to a battery and a load as shown in figure the current i i z and i l like the one we did above first of all this is 10. So, because it is in this is the load resistor this is protected it will always have 10 volts here. So, this will be 50 volts here. So, 50 means 50 by 4 again I can make this is 12.5 milliampere going here. This is 10 by 2 that is 5 milliampere. So, the remaining would be 7.5 milliampere. Now, you can check it this comes out as the option first in this case. Now, you can check yourself from this question from J E main on line 18. So, this was a very short quick revision for the diodes part. Please share your feedback. Thank you.